Welcome back everybody to 31 Days of Horror. So we're on our 23rd day and I thought it would be finally time to look at the really rather underrated Life Force from 1985. Directed by uh, uh, Toby Hooper, who also did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Poltergeist and the really rather underrated Un Invaders from Mars. Clocks in at 116 minutes long, but in the US it was only released in a 101 minute version. It's a mix of science fiction and horror. Produced by Schlock cult uh, films uh, auteurs, Canon Films for $25 million, but unfortunately only in the US it only made 11.6, uh, which has been theorised comes down to the fact it was badly cut down uh, by, you know, 15 minutes, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but it does make a big difference with this film. And uh, yeah, it's been scored by uh, Henry Mancini, who also did the first five Pink Panther films, Charade, Experiment in Terror and Wait Until Dark. And the cinematography was done by Alan Hume, who did three of the Bond films in the 80s, For Your Eyes Only, A View to a Kill and Octopussy, as well as A Fish Called Wanda, Runaway Train and Return of the Jedi, all 80s classics. I'm sure you will, uh, uh, you know, back me up on that. And it stars Steve Railsbeck, who was the only film I've seen him in of notable uh, worth is The Stuntman, uh, as well as Peter Firth, who had a minor role in The Hunt for Red October, but in the UK, at least, he's most well known for being in the TV series Spooks, who, uh, which he was in all 86 episodes of that, as well as the subsequent film that came out a few years after it finished, as well as Frank Finlay, who was in Robbery from 1967, and Matilda May, who was in The Jackal, and she was easily one of the best parts of that rather bad film uh, remake of The Day of the Jackal. So, uh, And it also stars in a minor role Patrick Stewart, who was in four Star Trek films, several X-Men films, as well as Excalibur, and the recent uh, The Kid Who Would Be King, who I thought was also really rather underrated. So, uh, yeah, this is based on The Space Vampires by Colin Wilson, a uh, novel, and, uh, yeah, it's about a space shuttle mission investigating Haley's Comet, which brings back a malevolent race of space vampires who transform most of London's population into zombies. The only survivor exit of the expedition and British authorities attempt to capture a mysterious but beautiful alien woman who appears responsible. So, uh, yeah, the reason I uh, mentioned not just the director and the cast, but also the cinematographer and the composer is because that's a great, you know, amount of people that have done really rather superb things before and after. And then you've also got the fact that Toby Hooper was given complete free reign over this. He was given the $25 million by Canon, given the book The Space Vampires and told, go have at it. And he uh, basically wanted to do a 70mm uh, version of a Hammer film. So, And this kind of feels like that, but with a much bigger production value, a much bigger budget than any Hammer film ever had. And uh, yeah, as a result, you have superb practical effects. Uh, you've got really good cinematography. The themes are well done. The, the score is incredible, especially the main theme by Henry Mancini. It, just look it up on YouTube. Just type in Henry Mancini, the Life Force theme, and uh, be blown away just by that a few minute of uh, score. Uh, it's got the, the cast is really good. The pacing is solid. It's got incredible action scenes, tension throughout, and the fact that this is a visionary piece of filmmaking from director Toby Hooper means that it's one of those few films in history that have had a large budget. Uh, a lot of people that are well talented in front of and behind the camera that has just been given that doesn't look sanitized doesn't look like anyone's just uh, cut away stuff to it and obviously that's not the case with the US version but with the international cut at 116 minutes long this is yeah generally one of those few films that feels like nothing has been uh, taken away or unnecessarily added and uh, yeah it's a right a righteous film from beginning to end it's gloriously well done in, in pretty much every way. Yeah, it's not the most complicated film. No, it's not the most in-depth film. It's not got the greatest amounts of characterization or anything like that. But if you just want a uh, a bang for your buck kind of, you know, horror sci-fi film that has superb special effects and practical effects as well, uh, then, uh, yeah, this is really to go for. And, uh, yeah, it's got a really manic last 20 minutes or so where... The whole of London is just being overtaken by zombies, things are exploding, buses are exploding, buildings are exploding, people are running around, cars are on fire, and it's just manic, but it's just so gloriously well done that you just just absorb the whole thing on in magic majesty, really. And uh, yeah, it got released on Blu-ray by Arrow Video, but quite frankly, this needs a 4K release because that would look spectacular, especially with all the space scenes at the beginning which I think uh, were part of what was cut from the US version, which is a great shame because then that just really 
delves it down to a horror film more than just a combination of horror and sci-fi. But yeah, fantastic film, really rather underrated. I can see why people might not have liked it at the time, especially if you were in the US and you only saw the short version. But as far as I'm concerned, this is one of those films that I saw twice in the space of a month. Uh, and then not only just rented it the first time, which obviously cost money, but also then eventually bought it on this Blu-ray. So uh, yeah, do uh, see it if you haven't already. It's widely available. I think it's on Amazon Video that you can buy it from or rent it from. Uh, but I'm sure you can find it somewhere else if not. So uh, yeah, get out there and see it. It's highly underrated. It is kind of classed class as a cult film nowadays, but either so it's well worth that you know admiration that it's getting now that it really did deserve back at the time and uh yeah this is one of those films that actually sunk canon films because after this he tried to do superman 4 which was another big budget film from them but was far worse than this and yeah eventually they sunk so uh yeah but at least we got this fantastic film even if it did ultimately cost uh yeah you know a film production company's uh you know money in and profits but what a way to go, <laughs> quite frankly. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.